Hey everyone, James Lynch here for Outkick.com, taking a look at Saturday's UFC 263 event, which goes down in Glendale, Arizona. It's got two title fights and the return of Nate Diaz and the return of fans. There's going to be some fans in the building as well, so really excited to see that on Saturday night. And from a betting perspective, this card has a lot of good plays, in my opinion. We'll get into them in a second, but if you guys are new to FanDuel, check this out. Really great offer going on here at Outkick. Uh, FanDuel.com slash OKBets is where you want to start if you're a new user to FanDuel, and there's a great promo going on right now. If you bet the main event, either Israel Adesanya or Marvin Vittori, just $5 and they win, you win $150. You can't beat that. It's a new promo going on from FanDuel. You want to take advantage of that. Again, FanDuel, one of the best books out there when it comes to betting combat sports. And that's actually the book we're going to be using here today when looking at the odds for this card. So like I mentioned there, uh, this is UFC 263, middleweight title fight in the main event, Israel Adesanya taking on Marvin Vittori in a rematch. Of course, Adesanya won the first fight. We'll get into that a little bit later. And we have Davidson Figueroa rematch matching Brandon Moreno for the flyweight title. And of course, Leon Edwards is going to be taking on Nate Diaz in a welterweight fight, which is actually going to be five rounds. I will also get to that in a second. But I wanted to start first on this card, on the prelims. Really interesting fight in the women's flyweight division. We've got Lauren Murphy taking on Joanne Calderwood. And right now on FanDuel, Lauren Murphy is the underdog of plus 120, Joanne Calderwood minus 148. Let's have a quick look at the tail of the tape here. Lauren Murphy, 37 years old, 5'5 five five with a 68-inch reach. Going to be taking on Joanne Calderwood, who is 35 years old, five foot six with a 65.5 inch reach. So you see there, Lauren Murphy um, going to be a little bit undersized in this fight compared to Joanne Calder, who's a little bit taller and has a little bit of a reach advantage and Lauren Murphy a little bit older. But here's the thing with Lauren Murphy. She is a girl that can get it done. Uh, we saw that in the last fight, getting that rear naked choke finish. She has a nice win streak here. Four straight wins has really turned things around since losing to Sajara Eubanks. And part of that is the fact that she's been training at a really good camp now in Texas with Derek Lewis. So I think that's definitely paid dividends for her in this fight. Now we know the story with Joanne Calderwood. She bounced back in her last fight against Jessica I, getting a decision victory there. She fought Jennifer Maya before that in a fight that was supposed to just keep her busy. She had the title shot waiting with Valentina Shevchenko. She ends up losing that fight and does not get the title shot. So now this is another opportunity for her to fight for a title as she takes on Lauren Murphy. Now, one theme that you notice with Joanne Calderwood throughout her career is that she has been submitted a few times. Jennifer Maya right here. We saw that against Jessica Andrade and we saw it against Marina Moroz. Lauren Murphy has a very good ground game and at plus money right now for Lauren Murphy, I think there's some value here in her potentially pulling off the upset here. Look, all the optics don't look in her favor. She's older. She's undersized in this fight. And if you look at the level of competition, I mean... Sarakova, not exactly a great opponent here, but uh, she does have some good wins over Andrea Lee and Roxanne Mataferi. But I think we can all agree here, Joanne Calderwood has fought the better opposition. But with all that said, I think Lauren Murphy, if she can get this to the ground, she has a very clear path to victory on the ground to submit Joanne Calderwood. So I like Lauren Murphy at uh, with the underdog money here at plus 125. I think there's definitely worth a shot on her to get it done on the prelims and potentially get that title shot with Valentina Shoshenko. All right, let's jump all the way to the main card here. Really awesome fight in the light heavyweight division. We've got Paul Craig taking on Jamal Hill. And right now on FanDuel, Jamal Hill minus 300, Paul Craig plus 235. Um, I really like uh, Jamal Hill in this fight. Jamal Hill, of course, 8-0, uh, undefeated, and uh, 30 years old, 6 feet tall with a 79-inch reach, taking on Paul Craig, who's a little bit older at 33, 6 foot 3 with a 76-inch reach. So Jamal Hill going to be a little bit bigger in this fight. And, of course, we got to talk about that last win, that knockout victory over OSP, Ovin St. Preux in December. Uh, he was counted out in that one, and he came through with flying colors. This guy is a knockout artist. And the thing you notice with Jamal Hill, he's doing things that a lot of other fighters are not doing. This guy's very quick. He's got the knockout power, and he's got a solid ground game as well, too. So really thinking Jamal Hill has a huge opportunity here to potentially uh, you know, move ahead in that division and get some of these marquee fights. Now, Paul Craig, of course, uh, the Bear Jew, we know he's up, uh, uh, you know, what his bread and butter is. It's his submissions. We saw that in, in a lot of his fights. His, uh, you know, submission game has really been on point here. Um, you know, uh, submitting Ankolaev, which is a great win. That was the first loss in Ankolaev's career. Uh, submitting Vinicius Moriera. The thing is, though, if Paul Craig can't get this get this to the ground, I think Jamal Hill has a clear advantage in the standup. Um, and not to mention the fact that he's a little bit bigger. I think it doesn't. It's not going to bode well. Now we should mention that Jamal Hill did get COVID. That's why this fight was rebooked. It was supposed to take place in March. Jamal Hill out of action. Did get back to training. I had a chance to speak to Jamal before this fight. Uh, he says everything is good to go right now. Everything in terms of his conditioning, his cardio, and everything 
everything else seems to be on point here. And I like him in this fight. Like I said, I think that uh, with him, you know, being, uh, you know, a much better striker, I think uh, if this fight does stay standing over the three round affair, I think Jamal Hill can knock him out. And, you know, minus 300, a little steep for my liking uh, in terms of betting him in this fight. But if you look at Jamal Hill by KO or TKO, it's at plus 135. You got to like that money, uh, the plus money there. I know if you look traditionally in Jamal's career, um, at least outside the UFC and, and even in the UFC as well, he's he's gone the distance a few times, but we've seen Paul Craig finish Alonzo Menafield, who reminds me a bit of Jamal Hill, although I think Jamal Hill is a lot more polished and a lot better, actually finished Paul Craig in the first round. So we know this is a guy that if you pressure him, you can go out there and knock him out and finish him. I think Jamal Hill is going to do that. So give me Jamal Hill by knockout in the second round to get it done over Paul Craig on the main card. Let's keep it going on the main card. Really interesting fight here between Damian Maya and Bilal Muhammad. And right now on the FanDuel book, we have Bilal Muhammad as a slight favorite at minus 245. Not slight, a two to one favorite, almost three to one favorite. Damian Maya, the comeback plus 194. I mean, it's a pretty interesting fight here. Uh, Maya obviously has a great ground game, but Bilal Muhammad uh, only been finished once in his career. I don't see Damian Maya going out there and submitting him. And the other big thing with Damian Maya, he's 43 years old. At some point, he's going to have to hang him up. Um, you know, he talked about uh, potentially retiring after his last loss to Gilbert Burns. So, you know, where is his head at at this point? Um, you know, he's still a guy that's very dangerous on the ground. Like I said, we've seen a lot of submission victories, including over Ben Askren and Lyman Good. But Bilal Muhammad has never been submitted. And I like those chances in this fight. I think what's going to end up happening is Bilal Muhammad is going to keep this fight standing. He's going to outstrike um, Damian Maya. Look, Muhammad, 32 years old, a little bit undersized here, five foot eleven with a 71 inch reach compared to Damian Maya, who's six feet tall, six foot one, I should say, with a 72 inch reach. So that's kind of interesting. And of course, Muhammad coming off that no contest against Leon Edwards didn't really learn much in that fight. But the fight before that, dominant, dominant win over Diego Lima. I think Bilal Muhammad, one of the more underrated fighters in the division. You look at his losses here, Jeff Neal, Vicente Luque. These are guys that are just top notch fighters in that division. I think with Damian Maya, we could be seeing the beginning of the end. You know, he was finished in the very first round by Gilbert Burns. Um, that's usually a sign that a fighter's, fighters may be regressing a bit. If you look at Gilbert Burns traditionally, he does have knockouts, but not that early in the fight. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Plus the layoff. He hasn't fought since March of last year. At least Bilal uh, already fought this year. He fought in March of this year as well. He's actually fought twice already this year. So a lot more active as well. So I like Bilal Muhammad in this fight. If you want to bet him at minus 245, I think it's definitely worth a shot. You could put him in a parlay or you could bet him up straight. Um, I, the only question I have is whether he can finish this fight or not. Maybe you look at that decision prop with Bilal Muhammad as well. He wasn't able to finish Diego Lima. Maybe the same case here against um, Damian Maya, but we'll see. But I definitely like Bilal Muhammad in this fight. All right, let's keep it going on the fight that everyone's looking forward to. Leon Edwards taking on Nate Diaz. I mentioned it off the top. This is a five-round fight. First time in UFC history that we have a five-round uh, main card fight that's not a main event. Um, you know, this was something that was negotiated when this fight was put together. Leon Edwards is the biggest favorite on this card. In fact, Nate Diaz is the biggest underdog in his career if the line stays still uh, where it is right now. Nate Diaz plus 410, the comeback on Leon Edwards, who's minus 590. Now, look, I like Leon Edwards in this fight. I'm not going to bet minus 590 in there. Leon Edwards a little bit more active if you look at sort of his career overall. Uh, Leon already fought earlier this year. Yes, it was an eye poke finish, but um, it was a, a fight that I thought he was winning. Edwards, 29 years old, six feet, two inches tall with a 74 inch reach, comparing that to Nate Diaz, who's 36. He's six feet tall with a 76 inch reach. Leon Edwards is going to be a little bit bigger in this fight and he's younger as well. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, I think the real question is, how does this fight uh, play out? Because, uh, you know, obviously I, I think Edwards is going to win, but how does he do it? Does he do it by decision or do, does he do it by stoppage? He's on an eight fight unbeaten streak right now. And if you look at a lot of these wins here, they're decisions. I tend to think that's the way this is going to go in this fight with Leon Edwards, uh, you know, just winning a decisive decision over Nate Diaz. The thing with Nate Diaz as well, very durable. His last fight did end with a TKO. It was a doctor stoppage due to a cut. But from what I'm hearing, Nate Diaz has got some surgery to fix all that. So I don't expect him to, to have a doctor stoppage in this fight as well. Um, but you look at it here, just not a lot of fights over the last couple of years. And yes, he's got a win over Conor McGregor. That's why he's such a popular fighter right now, I think, along with his fan base on top of that. But that's why he's getting this opportunity here against the number three ranked guy or a top ranked guy in the welterweight division in Leon Edwards here. And um, if you look right now in FanDuel, like I said, the line a little bit too steep for my liking with Leon Edwards at minus 590. Leon Edwards by points, by decision, is plus 125. I think that's some great value there. I know Edwards is going to try and go for the finish because the title shot is potentially at stake here. But I do worry that, um, you know, it, it, with Diaz's durability, he's only been finished. Uh, you know, you have to go all the way back to 2013 was the last time he was actually finished in a fight. Um, yes, it was a doctor stoppage in the last bout, but... 
in terms of him actually being finished in a fight, you have to go all the way back to April of 2013. So uh, that's a reason I think that Leon will probably win a decision in this fight. So I think the plus money by decision, definitely worth a stab in that one. All right, let's get to the co-main event. This is a rematch between Davidson Figueroa and Brandon Moreno. Of course, it ended up as a draw because of a foul that was committed by Davidson Figueroa in the fight. But uh, right now on FanDuel, you have, um, where are we here as we're going backwards? Uh, we got Davidson Figueroa minus 250, Brandon Moreno plus 205. So look, I think Brandon Moreno is one of the toughest fighters in the octagon. He's a guy that uh, is very, very, very difficult to finish here. Um, but I think this fight is going to go very similar to the first fight. But I think this time Davidson's going to win minus the foul here. Uh, Davidson is a little bit bigger here, five foot five with the 68 inch reach, and a little bit older at 33. Brandon Moreno, uh, five foot seven with the 70 inch reach. My apologies, it's actually the other way around. Moreno is a little bit bigger in this fight and a little bit younger, so he does have some advantages there. But I think the power advantage has to go to Davison Figueroa. Uh, one of the two of the wins that I really look at are Joseph Benavides finishing him twice. Very impressive. Nobody's finished Joseph Benavides like that recently. Uh, very, very, very impressive wins there. He also finished Alex Perez as well. That to me is the difference in this fight. You know, Moreno has some good wins in his career, but not a lot of finishes here. I mean, even the Brandon Royville win, that was an injury. Um, you know, a lot of decisions here. So I think what's going to end up happening here is uh, Davidson Figueroa is going to throw the kitchen sink at Brandon Moreno and probably, um, you know, there, there's a chance he could finish him. But I think also with Moreno's durability, I could see this fight going the distance one, once again. But this time, I think it'll be more decisive. So uh, I'm going with Davidson Figueroa by decision to get it done over Brandon Moreno in the co-main event. All right, let's get to the main event here. Israel Adesanya, Marvin Vittori. Right now on FanDuel, you can get Israel Adesanya for minus 280 to come back on Marvin before it plus 220. So there's a couple things about this fight that I think are, uh, you know, interesting. Um, first is the fact that uh, their first fight, which was Adesanya's second UFC fight, he uh, did defeat Marvin Vittori by split decision, but I would I would uh, get a lot of you to go rewatch that fight. I don't think it should have been a split. I thought Adesanya clearly won that fight, and Vittori did have some success in the matchup, but both are much different fighters. Adesanya going on to win the title, and Vittori actually not fighting a lot. He's only had a couple fights since their first fight, uh, which was his last loss, um, but let's get into the tail of the tape here. Adesanya, the middleweight champion, 31 years old, 6'4", with an 80-inch reach, taking on Marvin Vittori, who is younger at 27, but he's only 6 feet tall with a 74-inch reach, so Adesanya going to be the bigger fighter in this matchup. Of course, Adesanya coming off that loss to Jan Blakovic at light heavyweight, where he was taken down and basically controlled for the fight. I don't think he's going to have that problem with Marvin Vittori. Jan Blakovic, a much bigger fighter, and that was up a weight class as well. I think we're going to see the Izzy that uh, beat Paulo Costa. If you remember Costa undefeated at the time, Adesanya came out and put just put on a clinic over Costa, get, not only handing him his first loss, but also finishing him in the process. The other win you got to look at with Adesanya is the Robert Whitaker finish. It's the first time Whitaker's ever been finished at middleweight. It's his first loss. Huge, 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 and an impressive win there for Israel Adesanya as well. And if you just look at the level of competition between the two, Adesanya has fought the far better fighters in this matchup here. Now, Vittori is on a nice winning streak. I did mention that, but he's only fought five times since their first fight. Uh, Adesanya been a little bit more active. He is coming off a win over Kevin Holland, but Kevin Holland's not a ranked opponent. Uh, the win before that against Jack Hermanson, I thought was more impressive. That's probably the most legit win he's had in the weight class, but we just haven't seen enough of Marvin to know if he can dethrone Israel Adesanya and yet, and the fact that Adesanya already has the win over him. I just don't think it's going to bode well for Marvin Vittori in this fight. Is there value on Adesanya at minus 280? I think there is. You could parlay that as well. And I actually like a parlay here, and I'm going to get to it. Um, if you look at it right now, if you do a three-team parlay right now between Davidson Figueroa, Israel Adesanya, and Jamal Hill, you bet $100, you win 153 I think there's some good value there. It comes out to plus 153 I think that's definitely worth a stab. I think both champs will retain, and I think Jamal Hill is going to really break through in that light heavyweight fight like I mentioned earlier as well. So there you go. That is my quick preview for UFC 263. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, at Lynch on Sports, and make sure you take advantage of that deal. FanDuel.com slash OKBets. You sign up. You bet $5. If your fighter wins, you get $150. You can't beat that deal at all. I'm James Lynch. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching, and enjoy Enjoy the fights this weekend.